Welcome to the Rugby Expletives. I'm Jeff. And I'm Ron. And speaking of ex- expletives, Jeff, I, I heard you've had a few this week. Well, Ron, I have been trying to purchase a guitar recently off of eBay, and that has proved to be a fucking horrible decision. Well, I'm a mushroom cloud laying <laughs> motherfucker, motherfucker. My thoughts exactly, Samuel Jackson. <laughs> So, first time I buy a guitar is shipped through FedEx. That one arrives damaged. That's kind of a pain in the ass, but it happens. I return that one takes all about you know five minutes. They email me the, the transa- their transaction. The uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we work in a bank transaction. Yeah. <laughs> they they email me the tracking number slip, and I slap it on the package, drop it off at FedEx. Bada boom, done. Like ten minutes. All right. This brings us to guitar number two that I buy. <laughs> this one gets shipped via UPS, or fucktards, as I like to call them. <laughs> it's not like that's where you're about to go with it there for a second. And it arrives, of course, fucked up. Because why not, you know? Yeah. This one... Because not, guitar. This one isn't even just fucked up. This one's like pulverized. Like, when you <laughs> tilt it to the side, you just hear wood chunks from the inside of the guitar. It's fucked. So... They've destroyed the guitar that I just paid X amount of money for, so I'm already kind of irritated. And this is the second time this has happened. <laughs> I love how that's just kind of irritated for you. So, I get set up for the return for this one. The seller on eBay contacts me. He sets up the claim. He says, UPS is going to call you to set up a pickup time. I'm like, cool, you know, whatever. Right. Never get a call, so I'm like, that's interesting. Email the guy back and I was like, So did you get it set up with so Because I didn't get a call. Yeah. And I ask him and then you know he says, Yeah, I, I contacted them, they should be giving you a call. They just fucking show up at three thirty in the fucking afternoon. Because clearly <laughs> everyone is at home at three thirty in the afternoon, Ron, on a fucking Monday or Tuesday, whatever the hell it was. So I'm like, Well, that's kind of annoying. So I you know, I come after work, it's like, What the fuck are you guys thinking? Like why why would you just randomly come in the middle of the day? Yeah, seriously. And so I come home find the we missed and you slip. I find that funny because here and at my last house, we always saw UPS at like eight o'clock in the you know, in the evening. We, I've never seen. I always had the issue with FedEx because they always would come at like one o'clock on a Wednesday, and I'm like, "Fuck you, I'm at work." So you know, it's, yeah, it's just. I find it interesting. It's the opposite for you. Yeah, I, I don't even fucking know. I've, I've been at a loss for words this entire week because <laughs> of the shit. So yeah, I come home that day. They haven't contacted me. They just fucking came out of their own free will because they're. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> I see, you know, that we missed you slip uh, posted on my front door. I grabbed the slip. I was like, you know what? I'll just take the slip. I'll just go get it dropped off. So I, I pick up the guitar, throw it in my car, drive to the UPS hub. Not to the UPS store. Their motherfucking hub where they have all the motherfucking... <laughs> Is that the one out near the airport? No, no. no okay. uh, th- I think you're thinking of the actual post office hub or the FedEx hub. But the UPS one is at like, or one of them, but they might have multiple ones. But the one I went to was their hub at like 61st and Garnett. Insider baseball people that <laughs> no fucking clue where we even live. <laughs> and so I am I'm I have my guitar. I have the We Missed You Slip. I'm you're probably UP- Google Maps trying to plot out your apartment <laughs> to the UPS right now. I'm at the UPS hub with my guitar. Go inside. It's like, okay, get this uh, damage return for an eBay transaction. I'd like to drop it off, get it shipped back. Yeah, I'm sorry. We can't accept your package and ready to go package <laughs> that already has a trans uh, 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 <laughs> transaction <laughs> that keeps that that already has. I'm so fucking pissed off at the story. I'm just getting like my blood pressure rising as I speak. So I have the tracking number already associated with it. Yes, and I. Have the guitar in hand. I'm like, hey, yeah, the, you know, this, this, and this happened. Here's the tracking number. Can I get like a reprinted slip of it? I missed the driver. It's like, yeah, we can't do that. It's with the driver because clearly we can't fucking reprint a fucking tracking slip at the UPS hub. So like, you know, like whatever. Leave the UPS hub carrying my package that was ready to go. Fucking. <laughs> I just imagine you grumbling the whole way out. Yeah. So I, I get back uh, to my car. I was like, you know what? I'll call and set up a pickup time, an actual pickup time myself. So I call. They're like, yeah, we'll set up the pickup time for tomorrow between 6.15 p.m. and 8 o'clock p.m. when you were actually fucking home, Jeffrey. (laughs) Next day comes like, okay, cool. Go home. Another fucking we missed you slip on my front door. 
It was like, yeah, we showed up again at like 3.30 in the motherfucking afternoon. <laughs> and then I, and then guess what? They never come between 6.15 and 8 p.m. <laughs> I called back again that night. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> and first of all, they dick you around like to, to three or four right. different departments. And they make you talk to the automated thing. Yeah. And apparently I, they I thought it was those. a good idea to have where you input your tracking number, you're talking to the robot. Oh, good. Yeah, and it's Those not never understand. And it's not me. a text entry; it's a voice entry. So oh my. you you have to like say your tracking number four times to get it to read. It. And by that <laughs> point alone, you're pissed. Z one four nine. So okay, yeah. I call him. Like okay, I set up this scheduled pickup for this damaged item between six fifteen and eight pm tonight. It's like, well, we can't actually set up scheduled pickup times. It's really just about when the guy's route is. It's like, well, that's funny. Because the fucking guy yesterday told me it was coming between 6.15 and 8 o'clock. And I'm like, I would like to set up another scheduled pickup time. I was like, well, we can't really do that. I was like, well, what can we do? So they're like, actually, we show that the item was picked up today. So apparently, <laughs> asshole, UPS, asshole UPS guy goes to my apartment at 3.30 in the afternoon. And I'll go, Where are you at, Jeff? Where are you at? Well... I'm going to mark your package picked up, even though no one was fucking home. Like, did he take my neighbor's package? I was like, well, this must be it. Yeah, lucky he didn't take your dog or something, dude. And I'm like, on the verge of cussing out the poor guy on the phone that works at UPS. I'm like, really? He marked it picked up. Fuck you guys. And So, I ended up having to set up another scheduled pickup date at my place of work just to be present during the pickup <laughs> guy there was if they hadn't come and picked it up there would have been <laughs> UPS stores torch to the ground at 4 a.m. in the morning I would not have been held accountable because I mean why I, I think I have every right to burn down multiple <laughs> UPS stores at that point I have every right to commit arson at this point and to finish the story when I get home again after the guitar has already been picked up from my place of work, <laughs> douchebag fucking UPS guy came back again, even though he already quote unquote picked up the package. <laughs> UPS is just fucking with you at this point, dude. No, they're all garbage, dude. USPS, UPS, and FedEx. They're all fucking garbage, but I hate FedEx the most. Beca- see, see, what I want to have happen is I want... I just want them all... To go out of business at any moment. Don't it, even care. It, like it's times like this you miss the Pony Express. <laughs> but yeah, now, now that my blood pressure is just off the charts, <laughs> we actually have some news we need to get through today. Oh, that was a little good, 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 good vent, you know. Yeah, talking yeah, it yeah, out. You feel know, better. A, a little therapeutic, you know. Fucking UPS mo- <laughs> motherfuckers. If that guitar. So help me God, <laughs> if that fucking guitar is broken tomorrow, so, if there's a, if that box... Is, is, that, is the next one UPS also? The my, Yeah, my one for Amazon, <laughs> sure fucking enough, is UPS. So, yeah. So help me fucking God, Ron. So help me God. But yeah, we're going to move on to the news now. <laughs> we may have to have a special report on, on, your, uh, on your guitar uh, tomorrow, just, just so people know. Um. So, on to the uh, on to non Jeff related news. Actually, no. This one's a little close to home for us. Uh, this one is Ron and Jeff related news. I think. Uh, unfortunately, we get to start out the show talking about the late uh, Wes Craven. Um, I was shocked when I got the notification on my phone from one of my news apps that he passed and. Seriously, a uh, quick side note before we get back to it. How many icons in just kind of geek culture in general are we going to lose this year? Like, it has been nuts. It has been. Last year, too, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it just seems like these last couple of years have just been so rough. It's just... And how many have we had? Because they say they come in threes. Is this the fucking end of the cycle? Okay, Wes Craven, Litter Nimoy. Um, not as much... In comparison to like the ones I just mentioned, but um, what's the name of the guy from They Live? Uh, Rowdy Piper. He recently passed a couple weeks ago. Okay, so there's and, three. Um, 
Wait, almost Harry, had Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford had he a... He tried. He tried twice. Harrison Ford had a, an Indiana Jones boot in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> um... No, I guess I guess that's it so far for this year. Probably others, but we are unfortunately we're averaging one every three months at this point. Yeah, so I was Christmas. We will get to know our our, our next our next death. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just been a it's been a rough year. But yeah, so but and then seven, this guy, this guy, not only Wes Craven isn't just a filmmaker; he was a legitimate horror icon. Oh yeah, a lot of the way. Horror became the genre that it is, and is so beloved by so many. Because, well, like, when okay, people are, hold on, I'm going to back you up. Not the genre that it is, because it's mostly shit now. Well, yeah. What when horror went into its heyday? A big reason was yeah, was crazy. It was, but they have totally taken that legacy and fucked it up now. In my they, opinion, they they've gotten. A little bit more on track recently because the torture porn phase kind of died out with yeah. the Saw movies and Hostel. Yeah. So at least we're getting away from that. It's still, it's still far from you know what it was, but just you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, yes. Scream, Hills Have Eyes, Hills Have Eyes, Last House on the Left, a bunch of these. You know that weren't even just his own movies, but ended up you know being remade. So they were kind of. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Uh, There's a short in here, Swamp Thing. Um, There's a short in here that I'm interested in called Freddy versus the Ghostbusters, and that uh, Freddy versus Jason in here. Um, And there's just all kinds of stuff. He he really did. did. He really did help shape the horror genre in its in its prime. You know, he was. Anyone that goes to his IMDb page can tell what he's most famous for there, because I mean it's just Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger, all down the list. Um, but seventy-six years old. Now I get that that's not young, but that's not exactly old enough to kill over either. I mean, he had a, at least another decade or two left in him. I think he was still pretty. Uh, he he didn't really. Uh, oh no, he he was active. Yeah, I don't think it was as much related to directing but i want to say he was bare minimum a pretty active executive producer well he was still writing because there's a writing credit for 2015 here well was and and that was just characters because sometimes they like credit them if they use their work well that's true yeah but it depends i mean i mean it's not like you know he was old and delirious and didn't know where he was i mean he was still there he was still going strong um Fucking brain tumor, right? Brain cancer. Yeah, and I, I wanted to say uh, it was never leaked until it, it was announced that he passed, that he was sick. No one told me if it was, because I didn't even know he was sick. He died, and the notification on my phone, I immediately went, what? And I swiped, got into the article, and brain cancer, no idea. The, I had no idea. The people I fo- there's a couple people on Twitter that I follow that are even more so into movies than you and I are, and they were shocked too and had no idea. So I don't think it, it was. I think, I think it was just within the family. With, yeah, within the family, but uh, not not just the filmmaker, an icon in the industry because legend. We be will we will forever. And w- what a great name for a horror filmmaker, oh, right? Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Yeah. So yeah, anyone who has ever enjoyed. Speaking of. You just got to watch after you passed. You got to watch Nightmare on Elm Street for the first time. What'd you think? Yes, I watched the original um, for the first time. I've always wanted to watch it. Never did. The day um, he died, which is August thirtieth, um, I, I jumped onto Netflix. They've got uh, one, two, and three, I believe, up there right now. Um, but fucking loved it. It to- holds up, doesn't it? it? Totally really well. holds up. And there's a couple of times where. I'm sitting there watching this. Uh, what? What? Uh, what year was that? Eighty four. Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it was around there. Yeah, nineteen eighty four. Um, yeah, nineteen eighty four horror movie with nineteen eighty four graphics, um, nineteen eighty four story writing, and there's a few times where it still fucking gets you. What what uh what its strength is and one of the reasons I think it holds up really well too is conceptually it yeah. is the strongest of all of those old fame because like okay Jason is just an unkillable 
serial killer killing machine. Right. Uh, Michael Myers, you know, he's just a killing machine. He's the just whole, Jason. <laughs> the whole Freddy thing is a concept that's really clever and still, you know, well, yeah, it's creepy. It's, it's fucking because it's like terrible. Yeah. You know, if you're going up against Michael Myers and you got an Uzi. Yeah. You might have a chance to get away. If the fucker's going to kill you in your dreams, what the hell are you going to do? You, you have to sleep You have to sleep. Point. It was just a great idea. The movie holds up really, really well. I think it holds up a lot. But other than other than John Carpenter's first Halloween, I think it's probably the best of those mm-hmm. old horror movies. Now, you got to understand, also, um, a horror movie person will know what we're talking about uh, when we say that horror movie industry has gone to shit and uh, we fucking love Wes Craven and all that. It's because... While, I say, Nightmare on Elm Street had some gore in it, it wasn't about the gore. It was psychological it, horror. It was psychological horror, and they took the time to create the mood, they set the scene, they set the tone, and your your mind did most of the work, not the movie. And unfortunately, the one horror filmmaker currently that was doing that is now no longer doing it. That was James Wan. Yeah. The guy who did, um, I don't think you've seen them, but like Insidious... Conjuring, those mm-hmm. were both where he was. He was the, probably the last horror director that was, you know, pretty prominent who was actively going for mood. Yeah, which is so much more. They, they accomplished it through writing, which is something that's lost now. It's just uh, gore and tits. That's all horror movies are. I, and it's, nothing wrong with gore and tits, but it has its, it's not place, a horror movie. It has its place, but yeah, it's not a, as in. Thanks to freaking Saw and all of his twenty sequels and Hostel, like yeah, it, it it torture porn killed horror for what ten fifteen years because yeah, I'm pretty sure Saw, la- Saw Saw lasted I think about a decade yeah, and thankfully we're starting to move back, you know, trying to get back into you know kind of the renaissance of horror where mm-hmm. we're, we're they're gonna look at torture porn and realize what didn't work about it and then realize they need well, to take that Hollywood approach. always has a cycle that it goes through anyway um, every genre of everything has a cycle that it'll slowly move into one phase and then move out of that and go back and then the cycle repeats so you know you're gonna get um, story based horror movies and then it's gonna go into torture porn and then the cycle repeats so we should get back into Actual horror movies before we, long. We can Hopefully, have... around the time Alien Five is is working out, I would yeah. love to return ne- that genre to horror. Yeah, Neil Baumkamp with that project. I'm really looking forward yeah. to that one. But yeah, re- so, rest in peace, Wes Craven. He was a legitimate legend, and he will never be forgotten, at least no. by us. And yeah, and uh, we will we will miss you dearly. Um, on to uh, on to a lot less depressing matters. Uh, tell me about Star Wars Episode Eight. So we got some uh, now. Now that Force Awakens is kind of on the horizon, they've started to go full steam ahead with some of the, the Episode Eight planning. We already know the director. It was uh, Ryan Johnson, famous for Looper. So you're kind of thinking maybe a little more darker tone with this, and uh, at least I am. So. They've just this week started popping up with some more casting rumors for this. And the first one, which naturally blew up the internet because the name thrown around was Tatiana Maslany. And you're not familiar with it because you haven't seen it yet, but she is beloved by the Comic-Con geek culture scene because of Orphan Black. Orphan Black... I really, really liked the first season. The second season started to kind of lose me a little bit. Uh-huh. But her, she is always fantastic. Because if you're not familiar with the show at all, it's about cloning. Oh, yeah? her She plays like eight different roles. Really? Like consistently at a time. To where her acting chops, like to be able to just mentally prepare for that episode to episode filming wise... I mean, I can't even imagine. She's incredibly talented. So whatever character they want to cast her as, she'll be able to do it because I've seen her do like eight characters at once. Like yeah. it, so really, really, really smart in their part too because it seems like the good portion of people are kind of on board with what they're doing. But the more geek culture crowd you can get on board by casting people like this, which are geek favorites like right. her, it's smart on their part. So I think this probably is a legitimate rumor. It also sounds like they're doing 
uh, best of both worlds are casting for casting and then the casting for the sake of casting. Yes. You know? uh, another uh, thing that added legitimacy to this was uh, Felicity Jones, who was cast as the lead in Rogue One. Uh, Tatiana Maslany was the second lead up, so they're already okay. they've already been talking to her. So that's partially what led to this. So we shall see. Uh, has, I, there, has there been any news on what episode eight might possibly be about? No, I think. I mean, it's if, so far away by the time we get to the spinoff. If, if if they have an idea of what they want it to, you know, be about, J.J. Abrams would have whoever leaked it killed. So right. I think they're a little lock and key at the moment, but yeah. But, but yeah, speaking of up- upcoming sequels, James Bond this year. My segue was so much better. Do do <laughs> fucking tell, Mister S- Segway King. Let's hear it. Speaking of killing, <laughs> I fucking hate you, you and your fucking sequels. Um, Spectre, James Bond, Daniel Craig, possibly the last Daniel Craig. Um. Yeah, that uh, I found that kind of surprising. I figured he might do a few more, especially with how loved he is. Um, people that... It seems like, to me, from what I've read, people that don't even necessarily care for the movies, that the 007 movies he's made, even still admit he's an awesome James Bond. I really like him as James so, Bond. Um, I figured he might have a few more. And what is this the third or fourth? This would be the fourth this because would be fourth. Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, mm-hmm. and then Spectre. So yeah, four is actually a pretty good run. Four for, is a good run. You know, Pierce Brosnan did three. I thought he did more than that. Uh, he had Golden Eye, Tomorrow Never Dies. Um, what's the one with Halle Berry and the the Diamond Guy? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, and and uh, let's not forget uh, Rosamund Pike. I, w- I want to say he. He did, did he do four? That's the number I'm thinking of. I'm is blanking it? on the names of the films, but I'm just gonna ignore the fact that IMDb is open to my right and just go with it was three or four. <laughs> so especially and you know, no longer is it the time where you're gonna get like ten Bond films out of an actor like they used to. Yeah. So you take a four out of Daniel Craig, who's you know, not Well considering it was was it Roger Moore that only did one? I thought it was Timothy Dalton. That Timothy Dalton. I knew it was one more. of the two of them. Sean Connery did like all of them, and then uh, there's Timothy Dalton and Roger Moore, and then um, which I want to see Dalton in more villain roles, dude. He's but, awesome. Um, not that he was a villain in 007, but you know, I just I can't think of him now without thinking of Doctor Who, and because I just burned through those episodes again with my wife recently. Also, very cool on Penny Dreadful. I haven't seen it. He's he's like an old vampire hunter type dude. It's pretty cool. That sounds legit. Yeah, he's that sounds fucking legit. It's a very cool show. I would watch him as Van Helsing. And uh, Rose is in it too. Is she really yeah. Billy Piper? Yeah, she's very good in it. She uh, is she's companion. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Rose would be my companion. <laughs> No, I'm sad. <laughs> what was sad? Jeff is sad. <laughs> so, okay, the uh, additional thing that was popping up with this story is Please that God, yes, Idris Elba has been the fan favorite, and why wouldn't he? Yes, he's pretty much the fan favorite replacement of every character of the, you know in geek culture. But Idris Elba has Little been Mermaid? Idris Elba. <laughs> Idris Elba has been requested to be the next Bond by fans for the last three or four years, n- just nonstop. Did I know? I know. At one point, he said he wanted to be Green Lantern. Did he say at one point also that he would love to be James Bond? I'm pretty sure he's also. Do on I remember re- that breaking the internet? At some I'm point? pretty sure he's he's on record as sign me up and I'll be James Bond. Which again, why was he not signed up at that now, moment for I future hear, Bond movies? I hear, I hear recently on Twitter that he may be too street. To, oh be, <laughs> to be James Bond. That freaking writer. That that was trending on Twitter for like 48 hours in the top three because that guy is such an idiot. Uh, the, the article he's referring to is that uh, Anthony Horowitz, I believe was the name of the author, who wrote the most recent or one of the most recent uh, Bond novels, went <laughs> online. thought it was a brilliant idea to be quoted saying, I'm pretty sure Idris Elba is too street to be James Bond. First of all, what the fuck does that even mean? Second of all, you can only take that negatively. Right. And third of all, you can only take that as a racist yes. comment. Yes. I mean, whether that's how he meant it or not, 
It's a fucking racist. Even if it wasn't now. meant to be racist, it was a stupid fucking comment yes. to make. Because it just so. First of all, Idris Elba can do anything. Yeah. If you haven't, if you think he and he's played enough roles, he's pretty much proved that. Yes, at this point, he's too. one of the best actors in Hollywood. And just to say, and, and it, what, what an idiotic thing to say. But let's not focus too much on him. So uh, here's the other thing that I just we've brought it up before. I want to bring it up again because this is the perfect time. I just don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But speaking of racism in 007, if he does become 007, it better not be a fucking code name. The only reason that they wanted to switch to that when they brought up Idris Elba was because he's black and you know it's true. I mean, they had talked about it before, but yeah, you started hearing I, about it the most when they started talking about Idris Elba. It's, it's a clever idea, but to shoehorn it in at the time where they change ethnicities in the actors is kind of a douchebag thing to do. Yeah. I agree. But yeah... Uh, really, really looking forward to Spectre. Trailer was badass. I would be sad to see Craig leave, but if he's replaced with Idris Elba, I'm totally okay with that. So, <laughs> another thing: if Idris Elba as Bond, and you have Haley Atwell saying maybe a Doctor Who, sign these people up Seriously. as soon as they say this shit before they become attached to other roles. Could you imagine Idris Elba as John Stewart? I mean, he, he, I mean, dude, he could have been Batman. I would have been okay with it. He would have been a good yeah, Batman. Yeah, he would, dude. Seriously, Haley Atwell broke Twitter. I just uh, Idris Elba. I think now has broken the internet twice. Once with the John Stewart thing, and once with 007. Just give them the dotted line and sign them the fuck up. Yes, before they change their minds. Exactly. Oh. Okay. Now we got the okay, soapbox aside. Um, this one. Um, Speaking of I, people attached to Thor films. Yes. <laughs> um. This one, uh, you and me were kind of, eh, on, like, not bad, eh, just curious. Eh. Yeah. Um, the only reason I know what this next thing is is my wife. Um, she reads these, but apparently Artemis Fowl is going to be made into a movie series. This And part of the article said that they've been trying to get this made for the better part of like 10 or 12 years. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, it's always fallen apart. But yeah, the, Which is a positive sign for the movie. Of course. Uh, I, I must say. But the person they got attached to finally direct the adaptation for Artemis Fowl is Kenneth Branagh, who famously directed the first door. Yes. Who, so that already kind of tells you what they're kind of going for. Who I think uh, we all uh, don't give enough credit to for yes. not only making uh, the casting choice of Chris Hemsworth the store, which is genius, mm-hmm. but you know created the entire tone of Thor and made that character work, which ahead of time had no fucking clue how that was no going to work. No one gave two shits about Thor. No, no one cared about him. And not only that, I had no idea how they were going to make that work, and he made it work beautifully. Yeah. And set up the entire tone for Asgard and, you know, Loki. Yeah. You know, a lot of Loki came from Kenneth Branagh making that movie, so he needs to he he deserves more credit than he's gotten. Yes, uh, they I agree. recently reported he was possibly coming back for Thor three, so still holding out hope for that because be fucking awesome. That would be good news. But yeah, neither one of us has read Artemis Fell. I just figured it was worth mentioning because we like Kenneth Branagh, and if if it, if it was if it was a young adult book series that I've heard of. Yes. I figured it was worth mentioning it's because... It's not at, like, Twilight-level famous or anything, but um, it is famous enough that I've heard of it. You know what yeah, I mean? And it, it's, it's noteworthy. I, I know that it's been around for a while. There's several books in the series, and people like people either haven't heard of them or people know what it is or the people that have actually read it fucking love it. Yeah, I've so, never heard anything... I've never heard anyone checking it out and not... Becoming obsessed with it all, yeah. So it was one of those. So I, I wish now I you know, actually gotten around to reading them. <laughs> but like everything, I'm horribly behind. I've got too yeah. much shit on my to do list to add anything else to it. Yeah. Um, speaking of shit on the to do list, <laughs> um, of of whole surgeons of video game movies have been popping up recently. Uh, but Shockingly, after that badass Fassbender, <laughs> it's like, wait, they made they made Assassin's Creed look cool. Everything gets greenlit immediately. Yeah, no, uh, at Warcraft and all those uh, images that were released, and then Fassbender, the "Don't fuck with me, Fassbender" image, is what I'm take, now going to take to calling it. Take all of my fucking money, seriously. So this one. You know, again, in a long string of picking famous fan- franchises, fa- I can't even fucking talk now. Um, Borderlands has been greenlit. 
interesting. Not quite sure how you translate that to a movie because the thing about Borderlands is it's almost kind of MMO-ish. Yes. The strength of Borderlands has never really been the storyline. Now, to be fair to Borderlands, I've only played the first one. I didn't, I didn't keep mm. up on it. So, well, if I haven't, I I know I, I, you might as well just say I don't play games. But I haven't played Borderlands, but from what I know about it, could you not give it like a Fury Road kind of tone? There wasn't a whole lot of story in Fury Road. Yeah, uh, and it, that movie was widely successful. Borderlands is kind of like half Firefly, half Fury Road. Mm-hmm. Now you know Mad Max is a good comparison. That, uh, not only the Fastbender thing, but Mad Max is a big reason this got greenlit. Yeah, people. Fucking love Fury Road. Oh my god! So uh, it kind of makes sense, you know. Borderlands is a popular gaming franchise. They have a built-in audience. Uh, if I think one of between Assassin's Creed and Warcraft, I think one of those is going to hit and be good. Yes. So I think we will kind of get on the video game train of them actually taking them seriously. Hopefully, mm-hmm. fucking hope so because it's been way too long. But. Borderlands, I, I would definitely check it out. It's not something I'm going to be like Assassin's Creed, you know, like you know, looking forward to it with anticipation. But I would definitely check it out. Yeah. It's, so, just, uh, it's just, you know, it just kind of depends who they get attached to it. You know, see, and that's the big thing right now. It's just basically all we know about it is it's going to happen. That that's the only it's, thing. It's also outside of the villain, Handsome Jack, in the sequel, Borderlands Two. I couldn't tell you a single character in those games. It's yeah. not. It's very devoid of character, which is not good for a movie. You kind of tend to need. Or those. like we discussed with War, with uh, Warcraft, that could be a very good thing. Either way, it depends on how how they do it. Depends on how they do it and who they get to do it. They, yeah. they need good writers to be able well, to. Which that should be the next few announcements we hear out of that. I would imagine. Um, but yeah, so speaking of announcing, this next article is pretty interesting to me. I, um, I, I could not include this article. <laughs> well, no, we we must report on anything and everything, Bruce Campbell. Um, but so apparently he's taken over a segment or taking over um, Good Day Chicago. So, uh, for what I could gather from the article, is they had Bruce Campbell in studio for Good Day Good Day Chicago. I believe it was a little blurb for the new Ash versus Evil Dead. Right. I want to say that's what they were talking about. <laughs> Which well, we need Bruce, another trailer for that soon, by the way. For sure. And uh, of course, Bruce Campbell doesn't just come on to interview. They let him do the weather. <laughs> <laughs> In which they said he actually was trying to figure out, like, I have no idea where to point, but he was, he's Bruce Campbell, who cares? He was, right? he was just, you know, he's just going with it. <laughs> and no, knowing him, he probably just, like, when they just look at the meter, I just like, okay, you're on. And when they turn back around, he's already standing in front of the fucking weather map. So, yeah, it, it, they, they had him take over almost all of their news segments, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, it is. Because it. I hope that is that online. I'm that, sure it is. I haven't hunt? seen it yet. We, we before we're, I leave tonight, we need to go and find we're it. We're looking that up because that that is just too cool. Also, thankfully, some kind of news source out there knows that have fun. Yeah, because that is very unlocal news. You know. <laughs> yes. So that <laughs> yeah, no, that is a fantastic article. Um, I don't know. I don't have segway, segway derp. <laughs> Speaking of segways, uh, well, to uh, to bring the movie section full circle, I see. See, see, see? you're learning. I am it's teaching you well. Fucking late. Um, <laughs> yeah. Please, if you're actually listening to this, forgive us. We were recording at like 4 a.m. It's fucking mm. terrible. No one's listening. Um, Karen Gillen, Gillen, Gillian, Gillen. How do you say? It? I, know I, I think it's just Gillen, Gillen. Um, I don't care. Fucking Karen Gillan. That's all you need to know. Moving on. <laughs> Amy from Doctor Who. Uh, yes. Um, she has joined the cast of the most hard to find information on movie ever made so far called The Circle. And that is about all we can tell from it. Like, you can read an article that has like three or four paragraphs and it tells you fucking nothing about this movie. Um, Which might be kind of the point, I guess. Like, they don't want you knowing anything about it. Give me something to go on, though. Don't give me all the fucking spoilers. Don't circle jerk us, circle. Yeah. 
<laughs> but um, it caught our attention, one, because it's Karen Gillan news. Uh, we might as well be in her fan club and on her mailing list. Um, Wait, you're not? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here's my official card. Let me just pop my wallet out and show you. Um, but this movie... Um, definitely got our attention because not only is she now signed up in it, but so is um, John Boyega, Tom Hanks, and Emma Watson. That's a hell of a cast. And I'm sure you know who Emma Watson and Tom Hanks are, but if you're not familiar with the John Boyega name, he is one of the new main characters in Episode Seven, Star Wars. So as soon as that hits, he's going to be all in over the place. every fucking movie imaginable. The, he's going to pull a Chris Pratt. Yeah, is what's it's going to be. He's going to end up being huge. He's going to Jurassic World his ass. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, I will watch this movie just because of the cast, because we sure as shit don't know what it's about. <laughs> yeah. So, um, based on a novel, right? We know that. You think Hollywood came with the original idea? It's, yeah. They haven't had one in years. Um, Speaking of original ideas... No, speaking of... <laughs> I su- Ron, you're killing me. Speaking of fan favorites from Doctor Who... Oh, my God. Uh, See, you, there's you, a you, science to this. There's a science You did this. this intentionally, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. No, I told you it's fucking late, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're like, we're going to be any better when we record not at 4 a.m. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, the spoilers, if you don't want to know, which... I guess I'm not going to say this until you skip, okay? So, if you don't want to know anything about Doctor Who Christmas Special, period, until you go into it. This the, year, this not, not the year. last one, this year. Yeah, yeah. This, the one for this year. Skip ahead like two minutes. Skip ahead like two minutes, because there's nothing other to say other than this. But, spoilers. Spoilers. Works two ways. <laughs> because River is returning. Making her the only person... To span three different doctors, which is really cool. Really and if, and if you're going to cool. pick a character to do it with, you do it with you do it River, River. freaking song because one of the best ones Moffat ever Melody made. Melody Pond. She is. Uh, how, how can you watch Doctor Who and not love her? She is awesome. Seriously. So huh. she is returning. But why for, am I handcuffed? Why do you even have handcuffs? Spoilers. She is returning for the Christmas special, and like Ron was referring to, it's gonna be the first time any character span three. Doctor Regenerations because yeah. David uh, Tennant, Matt Smith, and now Peter Capaldi, and I think especially Capaldi and her, I think will lead to some really funny scenes, and hopefully, eventually Haley Atwell. <laughs> yes, <laughs> probably never going to happen, but I can dream. I can dream, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was a little upset. I, I would have liked to have let this be a surprise, but there was no fucking way in 2015 we can ever have a surprise anymore. Yeah. So. I, 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 when I actually when I brought this up the to only you, only reason we know is little information about it already is what you is it's not ran by the CW. Yeah, or yeah. near the Suicide Squad set. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, which I hear that web series ended. By the way, <laughs> they finished filming. <laughs> All of the sales for digital cameras plummeted. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's returning for the Christmas special. We can't wait for that. You know, it's Dr. Who. We're both gigantic, enormous fans. Ron just recently marathon through it all again. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll probably be doing some type of commentary for that because wh- we're only, what, now? A couple months? weeks away. Or what? For, uh, for the season to start, oh, we're only a couple, couple of weeks away, I think. Um, here in the States, is it 25th? I wanted to say September 18th. That was the one that was jumping to my mind, but I could be wrong. But, yeah. I have it. I actually have a uh, movies and TV calendar on my phone. Let me see. I'm not making this shit up. Of course you are. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. September 19th, Saturday. I was close. Yeah. So, yeah, a couple weeks away from Doctor Who. We need, I guess, in the next week or so, then need to be doing a Doctor Who special. Somewhat, some, yeah, doing that a, would be cool. Doing a commentary or something, maybe. Well, yeah, a couple of our favorite episodes. They're all going to be Moffat episodes, but maybe the, there's nothing uh, wrong with maybe that. Maybe the, uh, the Tenant Matt Smith movie, that'd be fun. Oh, Day of the Doctor, fuck yes. Yeah, you could have a lot of conversation, because obviously you have two Doctors going. You know, Yeah, like, three. John Hurt. Yeah, this, this is true. Which I liked him as the War Doctor. Anyways, 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 we, we digress. Yeah, super off topic. <laughs> yeah, so... Doctor Who, Doctor Who, Doctor Who. Okay, let's see you segue into this. Speaking of sci-fi icons... <laughs> this next story is about. <laughs> this next story 
you know, kind of hit oh, hits home in another kind of depressing note, but I wanted to include it in the notes, and that is that William Shatner is going to be pinning the biography of Leonard Nimoy, which they were famously really, really good friends. I think it'll be a touching tribute, you know, yeah. when he gets to write his biography, because unlike the rest of the cast, who apparently all hated William Shatner, <laughs> him and Nimoy were apparently legitimately friends, so I think it'll be a touching biography yeah. for him. I'll, I'll, I typically am not one to seek out biographies, but... A lot of those old behind-the-scenes things, specifically with the original Star Trek, is fascinating. Yeah, it is. So I would definitely... Because there was a lot of shit that went down on that set. Uh, so I would really, really like to check that out uh, once he's able to get it finished. Because, I mean, who doesn't love Leonard Nimoy? Yeah. Even if even people who aren't really big Star Trek fans, like they came out of their out of the woodwork, to, you know, to send tribute to him. It, it was one of our first episodes, right, yes. where we had the Leonard Nimoy tribute. So yeah, he his his passing really really hit home with a lot of people. I think the biography penned by Shatner is a really really great idea. I will for sure be checking it out. So yes, definitely. I want definitely wanted to include that news. So, um, speaking of uh, new and or original programming, looks like. Um, I didn't actually read the article. I don't know if it was rumor or actual press release or what. Um, but it looks like Apple may be considering offering original um, programming to try to compete with uh, Amazon Prime and Netflix. Because at the moment, Netflix, Amazon Prime is whooping ass at original programming, especially Netflix. We don't yeah. even have you know all of their Marvel crap out yet, and they're already whooping they ass. They have, like, what, four Marvel stuff, five, a fifth one in the works, and they have, they, they they've only have, released one? Yeah, I think they will have, what, four solo shows and then the team-up show? Yeah. If you want to consider it five, technically. But, well, that's not what I was saying. I was saying the fifth one, what, weren't they already talking about spinning off Punisher? Oh, yeah, that's true. So, six shows? So, six, Jesus. so just up. Marvel. Yeah. Not counting House of Cards. They're trying to bring the rest of development back again. Yep. They have like 30 other original programming that they blast all over my TV screen <laughs> when you load it up. So yeah, what what type of uh, what type of material... You're more of an Apple guy than me. Uh-huh. What, ty- like, what type of genres do you think they would try to approach? Do you think they'd be able to do a little of everything? Try to be like kind of a specific type of TV show that they're going to be going I after? Think, I think they would probably try to do... A little bit. Here, here's the thing with Apple. If it's true, it could be 10, 15 years before we ever see it. That's a good so point. So I think it's going to be whatever is the best, like, grossing genre at the time will be the most focused. But I think they'll do a little bit of everything. And I say that because if Apple is one thing and one thing only, it's marketing. Like, they have a brilliant marketing research um, division, and they are brilliant at following through with marketing plans. So, uh, whatever, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say, but whatever I think is doing the best at the time, they will find a way to do something like it. So, but it could be cool. Um, They, what... uh, they will have a shit ton of money to fund it with. That's yes, for damn sure. That's so what that's, I was about to yeah. say. They'll have a lot of horsepower behind servers and everything because their uh, they have their data centers that they have, dude, are insane. Yeah, and it's not going to be hard to make it perform better than HBO Go yeah. because <laughs> HB- HBO Go. If any of you have ever tried to use their website to run it. It does not fucking work correctly. Yeah. Still. It used to be inoperable. Now it just runs like shit. Yep. And we know because that's where our Game of Thrones commentaries come from. <laughs> so. And we add enough shit to the situation when we do that. You know, we don't need help by their website. Yeah, yeah. No, we fuck shit up on our own. We don't need anyone doing it for us. But yeah, speaking of HBO, we have another little Game of Thrones tidbit to throw into the TV section. And that is that Game of Thrones now has another world record other than being the most pirated TV show ever. <laughs> And uh, did they have the details on what they got the record for? I believe it was what most uh, simultaneously uh, appearing countries of a show or something like that. Uh, let's see. It's uh, yes, I believe it was. It was uh, they had the largest worldwide simultaneous television drama broadcast in history. According to Entertainment Weekly, episode two of last year's fifth season. Really, not eight, not hard home. Um, was aired in 173 countries at 2 a.m. on April 20th. That is crazy. 100 
in 73 countries. Um, so yeah, it was the, um, uh, it was the episode that had Brienne of Tarth versus Littlefinger. And, uh, the, the spoilers for Game of Thrones season, whatever the fuck the most recent one was. <laughs> yeah. Was five. Uh, it was when Snow becomes Lord Commander. Yeah, that was the next thing yeah. I was say when Sam nominated, uh, John for Lord Commander. Yeah, Game of Thrones is just crushing it to where I think we're gonna start getting more fantasy epics pop up in the TV realm. Like, they... I mean, why would you... Like, uh, one we talked about, why is there no show of The Witcher on, like, Cinemax? Seriously. That is a license to print ratings, because Game of Thrones is the biggest thing going right now. Why would you not have more medieval crap going, you know? Yeah. And the brilliant thing about The Witcher would be also that it could have more of a horror vibe to it, because he's a fucking monster slayer. You know, he goes into a town, checks the bulletin board... Rips off a fucking post, goes out, slays a monster, and collects his money. You know, they it's another thing. They have a pretty good built-in audience from the gaming you know, world, mm-hmm. and they just had their third game come out. It and sold ridiculously well. Not only that, those games are based on very successful books. Yes. So The Witcher and has been around for a while. And uh, it originated overseas, right? So it has yes. an international market going as well. Yes, already. And all of the people who are big Game of Thrones fans and have seen a medieval fantasy type thing work, they're like, shit, I'll check it out. I like Game of Thrones. Yeah. Why and are we not in Hollywood right now? I don't I, understand. I, they're, they're, you and I should totally be in charge of fucking casting, and someone needs to put us in charge of... Just seeking out properties that need to become. It's like things. that South Park thing. Like number one, make Ron and uh, Jeff casting producers two question mark three profits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, to, to back to Game of Thrones to accept the award, it was pretty cool. They actually sent out Arya Stark herself, yeah, Macy, Macy Williams, Williams, to accept it. So I just thought this was a really cool story. Which, by looking at this picture, she has fucking grown up, dude. <laughs> if you've seen her in season one of Game of Thrones, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And she's also going to be appearing on Doctor Who sometime soon. Yeah, I. Uh, it wasn't. Season, it wasn't right? the Christmas special. I think it was in the season because yeah. she was actually. Game of Thrones is so huge, they didn't even say anything. They just showed her in the teaser trailer for the new season of Doctor Who, and the whole Comic-Con crowd was like, <gasps> Yeah. Yeah, so... So, which, interesting tidbit, if you go back and watch fucking Doctor Who, earlier seasons, on up to current, you're going to count, like, half of the Game of Thrones cast, it seems like, in right. there. And she's doing it backwards. <laughs> right. She's going Game of Thrones to Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. But, now... Now, lots of, lots of good things coming. Um, and speaking of good things that could be coming, who knows if it's good or not, but it could be good. Um, looks like we are planning a standalone special for Walking Dead. Because the last spinoff went so well. <laughs> <laughs> Blatant shot if you're the Walking Dead. So, well, spinoff or special? As the article says special. Okay, here is what this thing is. I'm pretty. I don't know if it's a hundred percent greenlit, but what has being planned is that in 2016, they are going to be doing a special that will introduce a character that will appear in season two of Fear the Walking Dead. In other news, they are whoring out The Walking Dead in any way, shape, or fucking form they can. Because it how is far a, away are we from a Walking Dead universe? Well, technically, we already have one because they have two shows. Yeah. But you're talking about like Marvel style yeah. scale, pretty damn close. Because have if, a, a a TWDCU <laughs> or TVU, <laughs> TWDTVU. You just, you just said so many letters, my nose bled. <laughs> the uh, uh, okay, I'm a little conflicted with this because while I'm still watching Fear the Walking Dead and thought episode 2 was better than the first one, I am still not impressed even a little bit. That's just my opinion. I am, I think, more impressed by it than you are, but overall, my feelings are the same as yours. The which You're the optimistic one? What the fuck happened? Right? No, I just, I can see that they're trying to slowly ramp up to a hard home. Episode. Keyword slowly. Yes. Because it's a little I, too slowly. Because I'm all for slow build up to holy shit, what the hell's going on? The problem is if this was an okay, back it up a little bit. What they have appeared to be 
striving towards is making a little mini series zombie movie. Yes. And the problem with that is that's totally fine, slowly building up to that. But if it were a movie, the movie would already be over. Yes. We're like two and a half hours into it. Hardly anything has happened. But what has happened has been glorious most of the time. It's I, my my struggles with this are if you watch the very first pilot or the very first pilot the, the pilot <laughs> if you watch the very first episode of The Walking Dead in that first opening scene where uh, Rick and Shane are talking in the car their dialogue makes them likable where you kind of have people to grab onto and grasp onto and root for <laughs> at the moment in Through the Walking Dead I root for almost everyone to die yeah. I am rooting for Team Zombie in Through the Cliff Walking Curtis. Dead I don't dislike him. You have no reason to like him. I have no reason to like him, which is a problem because he's supposed to be the main character. Yeah. So, in 30 seconds of The Walking Dead, they made people more likable. Honestly, the way it's gone, it's made his current wife in the show a little bit easier to root for than it has him. Yes, she has had more development happen for sure than him. So, yeah, I mean, we don't want to turn this into like a three-hour Fear the Walking Dead review because we we reviewed the first episode last time. But we'll, We'll be doing... In between Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead, we'll do a, a recap of the whole season. Yeah. So we, we'll really delve into it at that point, but I have not been impressed. I will still watch. Season two, the most important thing to take here, season two is already greenlit. It's already happening, and it could do what S.H.I.E.L.D. did. Yes, that's... yeah Because uh, they're going to already have feedback on this season. Not rooting for it to fail. I want it to be good. I love The Walking Dead. Because the thing I appreciate the most... Is the horror movie tone to it. it? It is cool that it is different from Walking Dead. What also kind of hurts it in the taking it slow department is Walking Dead last season, the second half, was balls to the wall yeah, for like was nine straight episodes. So when you go from that to this, this by com- a little bit of whiplash. This by comparison, even though this isn't bad, is hell a slow by comparison but yeah we've been yeah. spending too much time walking dead so we're gonna move to some other shows that we are heavily into and that <laughs> is the, gonna spend way too much time on <laughs> we're gonna branch over to the cw verse we're just gonna of, zoom right on over nice nice we're gonna switch over to the CW. we spend more time on our awful segues than we do in that article. they used to be awful now they're just hit or miss so we're improving yeah. but yeah we're gonna talk about some cw talk about universes man they have like 30 shows it seems like going oh, right God. now you know, they still haven't announced a date for um, um, Legends of Tomorrow yet. I heard they didn't announce a date, but they want to pull an Agent Carter and then run it in the mid-season break. That's what I heard, okay. which is cool because it's yeah. a good little carryover. Because what kind of sucks is when you're getting really, really into the show and then it's gone for like a month and a half. Right. And CW is terrible about that because they end up having... Because they are weird about their scheduling, they have that like month and a half mid season break and they come back for it seems like two episodes and then they're gone for another month. Yeah. So you don't really have the show for like two months or three months. It's pretty terrible. I don't know why they schedule it like that. But the first news related to CW is that in Flash season two, Tony Todd, famously the Candyman, another mm-hmm. horror icon, yeah, will be playing Zoom. And they've also, I don't know if you read the article, they are pulling in season two what they did with season one. He is just voicing him, and who is Zoom is a mystery. So they're going to be doing the villain mystery again, which I love. Yes. And they handled really, really well in season one with Wells. Now, what's interesting about this is wasn't um, Tom Cavanaugh, the guy that plays Wells, also recast for this season? They've been kind of hazy from what I've... I've also been trying to stay away a little bit because yeah. C- CW spoiled crap. We won't go into detail, but Legends of Tomorrow, in like their, <laughs> their casting, like three They're, years before the show came out, yeah. had such a huge spoiler where I'm like, fuck you, CW. I don't want to know that. So I am hesitant to look at anything CW produces and news Well, what, the only reason I bring it up is because they could be doing something... Really interesting. And I'm going to go ahead and declare spoilers for Flash because I know uh, there are people that I know that are getting caught up on it. I'm sure there's a lot of people getting caught up on it after you know hearing about it for so long now. Not from us because no one listens. But um, Sad face. Yeah. <laughs> so what I find interesting about this news is in the first season – the mystery was, you know, who's Reverse Flash and who is Harrison Wells, right? Turns out they're one and the same person. 
So now we're going into alternate timeline. So is Tom Cavanaugh actually Wells? Is he a good guy? Or are we going to have multiple flashes and multiple reverse flashes? Because Professor Zoom is reverse flash, right? Uh, Isn't that his original name? It's another thing that's kind of hazy because the the comics have had like four or five different Professor Zooms and reverse mm. flashes, and it all became really kinda muddled. Muddled, yeah, that's a good word for it. In that, See, I like the. F- I'm handy to have around every once in a while. I am uh, a fan of the Flash, but I'm not to the point like Batman where I can read you off like comics history of the character. And, right. But yes, you're right, Professor Zoom. Originally was like an alternate name for Reverse Flash, and it's it's. A mess. I know it was at least at one point. It might not have always been that way, but yeah. I feel like at one point it became. I'm sure such. if if anyone listening is actually a gigantic Flash fan, they would um, go and say we're wrong in every way possible. But that's not yeah. going to happen. So, yeah, uh, the good news is Tony Todd's awesome, great voice. It'd be a really really creepy yeah, voice to use for it. So that's that's exciting, uh, dude. Flash is like a month away. I'm fucking excited. Yeah. Because our next subject broke our <laughs> balls, but Flash was freaking awesome almost every single episode. So, yeah. Bring on Flash Season 2. Bring on Tony Todd. Uh, alternate dimensions and shit is Jeff Crack. Yeah. So you throw that into Flash, and <laughs> I'm all over it. But, yeah. This next article... Speaking of hoping for alternate dimensions... Yeah, no fucking kidding... The Arrow showrunners have come out and said that the season four trailer will break the internet Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> so it will break the internet because it's even worse than season three? It will break the internet, they hope, <laughs> in a positive way, not the negative way that happened with season three. Yeah, no, it's what needs to happen is Flash needs to break the time barrier and shatter Arrow season three and season three never happened. Dude... Dude, for the love of God, <laughs> please can we can we just get rid of Laurel? Like us all, I'm not asking for much. Just get rid it's of Laurel, Laurel. That falls off the roof after Flash breaks uh, the time barrier. Oh God! But then that puts her in Legends of Tomorrow, dude. Okay, so <sighs> since I, I guess spoilers for Arrow season three. I don't know why the fuck you'd be watching it. Here's a spoiler for season three of Arrow. Don't fucking watch it. It's garbage. It really is. But. Black Canary, I have a question. She died. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that wasn't a question. <laughs> no, hold on, I'm getting there. Stay with me. She died, right? So, why in fucking Legends of Tomorrow, a show with fucking time travel, do they Lazarus pit her? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Why the fuck do they not just pull a Doctor Who moment where fucking Rip Hunter catches her before she hits the ground or something? Maybe because paradoxes? Dude, I don't I don't know. It's it's the CW Does DC it make verse. Any sense to you? Well, first of all, what part of let's kill cool black coronary because everyone <laughs> fucking coronary? Whatever. Black Dude, it's, coronary? It's late. I'm tired. <laughs> fuck you. Let's kill off the cool black canary because everyone fucking loves Laurel, Ron. <laughs> Fuck you, Arrow Season 3. I don't even want to talk about you anymore. Moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> We're going to move over to the gaming section. Do-do-do-do. And this first, I, I sent this to you at work the other day because just the image of it was fucking awesome. Did you see the image? I did. I watched most of it before idiot customers interrupted me. Fucking idiot customers. That's no, a, I'm telling you. I've also had a horrible week with moron fucking customers, dude. Well... With, with the with the industry that we work in, first of the month is fucking terrible. Yeah, it's every been month. it's been a nightmare. But yeah, back to the shit people actually want to hear, but not hear us talk about <laughs> the 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 mods for GTA Five are be, getting out of hand in a great way. Yes, uh, a star destroyer <laughs> is playable in Grand Theft Auto Five, <laughs> and the greatest thing about it is it's not like a plane. Yeah. Uh, that was modded to look like a Star Destroyer. It was a fucking Star it's Destroyer. Like actual size. Like, it's bigger than the city. <laughs> like, Independence Day style. And it's just hovering there. Like, it, it looks like District 9. Like, it it's really like, does. It's like hovering above the entire city. <laughs> I'm surprised no one's done District 9 yet. 
Yeah, they, they. I mean, just give them time. GTA Five has like everything modded into it now. Yeah, and it, like this, it, this looks so much fun. It actually kind of made me want to play it on PC just to play the mods. Please, Google GTA Five Star Destroyer mod Nerdus. And they they also uh, and uh, watch the video. They also have uh, land speeders. I yes, think, I think usable. But the, I, I, in, I in the video, they're using a land speeder to fly around the Star Destroyer yes, to show you the Star Destroyer. Yes. So yeah, definitely. Even if you don't have that game to play, look up the pictures because the images are fantastic. Got a little bit more Star Wars news, and that is that Star Wars Battlefront, the game that I am heavily looking forward to, but Ron doesn't really give a shit about. <laughs> I'll is play getting, it, but I'm not buying it. I, I'll buy it. And yeah, I, I, I know. Well, that's how I'm going to play it. <laughs> we'll be doing, uh, once we get back to doing Let's Plays in like 2017. Get back to after our one. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, Freddy's 4. Three years later, still haven't done Freddy's 4. So. Well, we're going to do Freddy's 4. Here's we'll Freddy's do, 3 in the meantime. We'll do Freddy's 4 when Freddy's 7 comes out. <laughs> but yeah, Battle It'll be after the movie. Battle, <laughs> the Force awoke and is back to sleep. <laughs> uh, Star Wars Battlefront is getting a beta coming early October. Fuck yes. This might even be coming out around my birthday. Now, the interesting thing about this, though, is it's an open beta, and you don't have to pre-order the game. Did you read that? I did not read that. That's interesting. You do not have to pre-order the game, and it's open. It's a open beta, at least at the time, right now, uh, as of this podcast. I don't know if that's going to change or not. Now that is interesting because that is saying people like me who have their doubts about this game come and try it. Try before you buy, basically. Because let's be honest, it's a beta. It's going to have some issues, but. Betas, especially betas that get sent out to the public, largely are the complete game. For the yeah, they're they're yeah, I mean, it's like it's like a, a test of the complete game. It's yeah, not it, it's not an, it's not the whole game you know there for you to play all the way through and beat and never buy because they're not that stupid. Even yeah, for even if it's EA or anything, it's not they're not that. Yeah, stupid. and and also if you didn't see the gritty nitty gritty de- uh, details on it, they are doing like the forty man. Yes. Game mode as the beta. So, um, but what I'm trying to say is it's not, you know, you're not going to try to load into it and it's going to crash all the time like it was at Street Fighter recently. Yeah, Street Fighter 5, I think it's 5. <laughs> Street Fighter fucked it up. Uh, <laughs> they, they were like, pre-order our game, we're going to get you access to the beta that broke. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fuck you. So, no, I find this, uh, I found that pretty interesting. It's going to be an open beta. You're um, still not going to play it, though, right? Because you said you don't like playing betas. You're, I, I typically don't, but... That one kind of piques your interest. I mean, yeah, a little bit. I mean, like, you, you, you said, you know, obviously, multiplayer is not your th- Online multiplayer is not your thing. Yeah. Uh, Especially the, not first-person shooters. The, uh, well, you know, it's, it's, me the fuck off. it's also third-person. Like, you can switch back and That's forth. That's not what I'm getting at, Jeff. <laughs> it is... Yes, online first-person shooters have a tendency to be brutal if you don't play it 24 hours a day. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. hardly ever, ever played them back before there were people that only would eat, sleep, and breathe a particular game. Although, uh, in its defense, uh, since it's pretty much Battlefield with a Star Wars skin, Battlefield is the easiest of the Call of Duties and Halos of the world. Now, it's interesting you said that also, Um Battlefield with Star Wars skin because I know you didn't mean it this way when you said it but I also read an article about it recently that a lot of people have been saying that meaning those words and they were trying to put out everything they could to say no that's not what this is it may be using a similar engine but this game is built they did not take Battlefield and port it into Star Wars uh, this was also I think going to be. Is, I, I was sitting here waiting for an opportunity to say that, so it's funny you said what you said. The now Battlefront. I'm pretty sure this isn't going to be one of those that's cross-platform back to like the PS3 and Xbox 360, right? I'm pretty, I, I don't believe so. I want to say this is the first EA shooter that is with just the current like you know PS4 gen, right? Because yeah, it seems a little so. too big to be able to work on those consoles, so they kind of would have had to have build it from the ground up to be able to make it for those new to make to make it optimized for the new consoles what I'm trying to say is it going to be an origin I assume so I thought they got rid of origin oh did they that's I could be totally dead wrong that's just off the top of my head but yeah 
Uh, I can't wait. I will be buying it. It will probably not work the first week it comes out because none of their games ever work the first week they come yeah, out. Yeah, no, dude. You're get- first, I'm going to say at minimum the first three days, possibly to the first week, good luck getting online. The uh, Just because, one, the anticipation for this game yeah, is so high. And a Two, month it's before, fucking Star Wars. It's fucking Star Wars a month before Episode Seven yes. comes out. So... so yeah, no, those servers. It's, yeah. it's gonna be brutal. And if it's anything like the uh, the Sim City launch or anything like that, it's gonna be fucking awful. Hopefully, at least uh, since their uh, servers are gonna be fucked up for the online, uh, they do they are having local like horde mode where I'll be able to bring it over. You can just dick around and shoot some stormtroopers, which is fucking cool. Me, yeah. So, yeah, I, I can't wait for Battlefront. We'll be doing uh, probably multiple videos, checking out all of the features of it for NPC, our Let's Play series. So, yeah, uh, we're going to move on to the next one, though. And another game I'm really, really looking forward to, besides Battlefront, is Uncharted 4. This is one of those that's one of my all-time favorite game series. I really, really like them because... I mean, you saw when we checked out the trailer from, from E3, it's a movie that's interactive. Yeah, it's more yeah. or less a movie. And Uncharted 4 will officially launch March 18th next year, 2016, which, fuck yeah. Wish it would have come out, you know, this year, obviously, but I'm okay with them, you know, fine-tuning it, obviously. You want a good product instead of a rushed one. So, I will be playing the fuck as Uncharted 4. For damn sure, you actually. This was one of those that you're behind them, but you own all of them, right? And yes. You, you plan to check them out. Yes. So I need I mean, to get my ass in gear. <laughs> yeah, you've got five, six months now yeah. to beat that and every other game known to man that you haven't played. Pretty much on top of work, school, podcast, you know. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. And uh, speaking of another heralded sequel coming out in the gaming industry, Metal Gear Solid Five. Oh, Konami. Every week, there's a... Fr- we need a Konami drop. Yes. Because every week... <laughs> and it's going to be... Every week, they do something douchey that makes me shake my head, dude. Like, seriously? Well, we've got something that uh, that they did that's douchey then for the next article after this, but g- please, go on. So... Is this 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 didn't affect us personally? But if it would have, we would have been pretty loved. Yeah, I think I just okay. Here's the thing: you hear about gamers that want their physical media, and I am one of them. I am one of them too. Because here's the thing: if I'm going to pay sixty dollars for a game. I expect to get everything that comes with that. The box, the box art, the book, the disc, all that shit. Because online, it's still $60. Which is horseshit to me, and it always has been. So, you want me to start downloading? At least, at least a $5 discount would go... Something. I think would go a long way. Yeah. Something. Something. You have no shipping costs, no packaging costs, no production costs. It's almost like a slap in the face. Yes. To To... Charge, which is like for like me it's to enough. download it over my own internet connection that I am already paying for. Yes, yes, like, and you, and you know, I kind of like how you know with my gaming, I have all the Arkham games, I have all the Uncharted games. You know, you, it's well, like you it's like I, a you and I collect things. Yeah, it's like collector mentality. Yeah, so having it on a shelf, all lined up, it's, and it's nice and pretty. And people like to, and not just gaming, but people have kind of jumped to, well, the collector mentality is dead. We're in the age of Netflix and Amazon Prime. The age of streaming. We're in the age of streaming, and we kind of are. They're absolutely right, but that doesn't mean that the collector mentality doesn't still exist. CE3 of 2014, when all of the PS4 and Xbox One nonsense was going on. Yeah. They had that awesome commercial where it was like, this is how you (laughs) trade games on PS4. Yeah. Here you go. And he just literally handed the yeah. game over. Yeah. So, obviously, because uh, the internet broke when that happened. You know, yeah. it was a big middle finger. They, even though they had said... That the console we, wars got kind of nasty last year. Which, <laughs> they should always stay that way, because yes. it's, it's always more fun. But, yeah, Xbox uh, and Microsoft had said, well, we can't change it. It's too, you know, it's a... Sh- if you want an offline product, go get the Xbox 360. Fuck you, Don Matrick. Yeah, that was... Uh, and you know that showed that there still is a big collector mentality on the market. It's yeah. the, you know especially in geek culture in general. So we're gonna geeks like to collect things, right? 
Mind blown. People are getting trampled for action figures at Comic Con. That's happening. That's happening as we speak because the the, the Star Wars thing is happening right now. Right. But yeah, back to the story, uh, and that is that Metal Gear Solid Five, the PC version, just includes a Steam key. So. It pretty much well, you no, pretty no, no, much no, no, you no, open no, the no. box and a middle finger pops out. That's what yeah, happens. That's basically what happens. Okay, so you know, typically like uh The Sims is a great example. You can go out to Target, Walmart, Best Buy, whatever, pick up The Sims, you open it up, and what they've been doing lately is you open it up and there's just a card inside with a key. That's not what they did. What they did was there's a disc. You take the disc out of the box. Like, all right, I'm going to install my Metal Gear Solid now. You put it in, and it's a Steam installer. What? What? What, you you motherfuckers? Yeah. Now, I'm hoping that Steam installer comes with a fucking CD key to enter into Steam. (laughs) But the article didn't actually specifically say. (laughs) Man, you know, it's almost like Konami wasn't aware they have a PR problem. uh, I know. Let's add more fuel to the fucking fire, guys. (laughs) Like, come on. You know... There will be expletives has basically been there will be expletives about Konami. Because the last several episodes, Jeff, we have reported on Konami's douchebaggery. And I can't help but wonder... I know that this wouldn't be enough of a reason probably for Kojima to leave. But I feel like the appalling working conditions and God knows whatever else, probably the switch them wanting to focus mostly on mobile gaming. And then probably the cherry on the fucking top would be, you're going to take my game and just put take my st- name off of it. And it'll just put a steam installer in the box for my fans who probably want physical media like I just I can't help but wonder it, all these things. And I have another in. thing to add to this, which kind of amplifies what they did. Okay, this video game franchise specifically has been going on for it was twenty eight years, I think was yes. since it started. So the fans who are big fans of Metal Gear potentially have been following it for three decades almost. That means you kind of have an older fan base for a big percentage of the fan base. Yes. Older geeks liked to collect shit. Yeah. No, you just get Steam Key. Yeah. Fucking Konami. Every week, every week for the last like month and a half, there's been something else douchey they've done. What the fuck? Just go out of business. I'm just sick of talking about them. They're just well, their current business model, the way they've been talking, it sounds like they will eventually. Good luck with Flappy Bird 2.0. Yeah, basically. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we have another Metal Gear uh, story to get to. This one on a, you know... Positive note. Well, that's not a positive note. Of course, I, I plan to fuck that up at the end. But um, this was pretty cool. Um, it's a, what was it, a 10 minute video? Yeah, you can find it on Nerdist. You can find it on Polygon. It's all over. Yeah. Um, but basically, um, Kojima saying his farewell to the fans. And. He goes around and does some uh, some interviews. Um, it was with, a lot with voice actors. It looked like for the most voice part, voice actors and art artwork people. And our that. boy Troy Baker, yes, Troy Baker. Um, which we kind of lost our minds a little bit. Like, uh, 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 Troy, Troy, Troy Baker, Troy oh, Baker, uh, Troy Baker. Baker. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm over here, Troy. We're over <laughs> here, we're over here. Wave to the webcam, Jeff. Wave. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Troy. Yeah. <laughs> It's holding up signs like fangirls. Um, I'll wait for you. <laughs> um, so, but there's one especially touching um, moment in the video. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Uh, I just, I just want to make sure I get his name right. Um, there was a fan of Metal Gear, as I understand it. Um, die hard, die hard, die Metal die Gear hard! Uh, fan of Metal Gear, and he had cancer, and they actually added him as an uh, credited him as an honorary Metal Gear Solid team member, right? Like he's in the credits at the end of the game. Uh, yeah, and uh, and during the tribute video, the the composer and uh, crew who did the music for Phantom Pain, they mm-hmm. did uh, like a musical tribute to him. The video is, you know, titled in honor of Sean Paul Gillespie. Yes. And just very, very, very cool uh, to he, see him go out of his way when he didn't have to do that. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. Um, 
this individual unfortunately um, and sadly tragically lost their battle with cancer and it was what like i think i think they said it was like four days after he had received the the gift uh from hideo kojima and the rest of his crew which was it looked to be a couple of fan of paint action figures signed by all the creators and everything very yeah. very cool to do that yeah, oh yeah so number one they didn't have to do any of that they didn't have to do any of that at all but near the end of this video um kojima travels all the way to these people's house and he's talking to the families, uh, family members, and he's getting a tour of the house. And there's several scenes with him in um, um, in uh, Sean Paul Gillespie's room, and he's going through memory books of him. He's looking at pictures of him, and the room is just covered in Metal Gear merchandise and models and action figures and posters and um and stuff and it was just very touching because like i said kojima is hideo fucking kojima he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants he doesn't have to think about anyone or anything but he traveled all the way out to these people's home to see where this person lived and i am probably gonna cry talking about this i think you're gonna have to take over for a minute he it's I just I don't know. There, he he has nothing to gain by doing this he, other than personal fulfillment for doing it. Yeah, and uh, I, they had one quote that he said that I thought was really touching too that I wanted to quote, and that is that this was K- Kojima talking about this matter. Uh, I think there was actually a quote they play in the video too. The players are everything. Without them, nothing I do would matter. My mission is to exceed their expectations. It's all that matters to me. Their energy brought me to where I am today. You know, Hideo Kojima genuinely seems like a cool guy. Yeah. And from all of our articles we posted about the last couple of months, good guys in the gaming industry are few and far between. Yes. It is a cutthroat industry full of a bunch of douchebags and Konami. <laughs> <laughs> so it is rough business. Konazis. <laughs> but it was the Fourth Reich. Is that what we yeah. tagged before? Yeah. But yeah, this was, if you haven't uh, seen it, definitely go check out the video. For everything that comes out, Konami looks worse and worse, and Kojima couldn't look like a cooler guy. To where all of this horrible shit that has happened when they have parted ways in these last uh, couple of years, a few months, I forget exactly. We don't really know how long this has been happening. It could have been yeah. a, a, years the and public. years it could have been going on before they finally had the break. But how could you not see that Konami... Is at fault. I yeah. mean, because like when he's flying all the way, I think it wasn't was it it was America. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. To to that uh, that you know that fan's house. Well, the name like Sean Paul Gillespie. That's American, bro. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's it's just you know it's really really cool to see someone with as big of a name as Hideo Kojima. You know, not live up to the standards that a lot of people not just in gaming but. Higher up video game Video game companies don't give two shits about the players. Very, very rare. I mean, uh, CD Projekt Red, the Witcher guys, seem to be, you know, like the, the kind of diamond in the rough. Yes. They give out free DLCs, but 99.8%, you know, in, in the, of the gaming industry is cutthroat yeah. to a T. And yeah, and I was, I was going to say, you know, not just in gaming, but... People that are as famous in their industry as Hideo Kojima typically live up to the standard of being assholes. So it's just a, it's a pleasant surprise to see someone like Kojima going out of his way to be yeah. you know just a good guy. Seems like a very cool guy. Adores the fans. The fans adore him. He has his own personal army, dude. I mean, his fan base is loyal, loyal to Kojima. And, and, and what's kind of ironic about it too, when you think about it, is that them breaking uh, off with Kojima is more than likely the end of their company. Yes. Because that company, without 28 years of Kojima Metal Gear games, isn't still a name we're talking about right now. And they could have had Silent Hills. They That they, was going to make a billion it's like dollars. They, it's dude. like they don't want money. Yeah, they literally it's like, do not. Instead of making, they want microtransactions. Instead of making Silent Hills, let's go develop Floppy Bird 2.0. Good luck yeah. with that, guys. You know, Good luck with that. You, you deserve yeah. to go out of business, which is going to happen sooner rather than later. So, yeah. good. Uh, but yeah, to not end on a negative note, 
thank you, Hideo Kojima, for being a good Actually, guy. I already said before history. we got to this article that I was going to fucking ruin everything we just built up. Okay, go on. I'm curious what you're going to say. Because, you know, I'm the, I'm the negative fucking Nelly in this show. So, I, I have to be me. I'm sorry. I had too much positive energy during that story. I gotta let it all out. And, fuck you, Konami. Fuck you. You take Kojima's name off of not only Metal Gear Solid Five, but every Metal Gear game he's ever made. That was an article that came out recently. Not, not just the game series he made, his legacy yes. as a human being, practically. They took a Sharpie and took his name off of it. Okay? So, what do you see at the end of this fucking tribute video... After all this beautiful imagery of Konami and the fans and going to um, going over to Sean Paul's house and meeting with his family and he's in his room, what's the very last thing you see? Fucking Konami logo pops up in your face. At the last second. At like, the yeah, very can... last second. With an ominous red background and Konami. And I just instantly, fuck you, as soon as I saw yeah, that. It's like you, the Konazi dude. I'm telling you, what, what, so you're gonna take his name off of shit and put your name on his shit. In every way imaginable, they come across as assholes. It's like they are trying, they're actively trying to go out of business. Yeah, they are. And you know, uh, you know, good on you, Hideo Kojima. Yes. He is getting away from, I, okay, not only him, I hope everyone working for Konami. <laughs> I like that man's gonna go places, Jeff. <laughs> I hope Hideo Kojima, cause what he's gonna do is he's gonna make his own gaming company that's gonna wipe the fucking floor of, you know, with Konami because yes. he is the gaming company. And I, ho- I hope he's able to bring a lot of his crew over with him and get everyone imaginable away from those horrible fucking scumbag people. I'm telling you. So. Yeah, that pissed me off, but still watch the video. Just, 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 just try to ignore the last like two seconds. Don't support Konami in every way you can. I'm sure as shit not buying any of their games full price nope, ever. Never. It'll have to be 19.99. Yep. Before I I give them any money, and even then, if I buy it at all, I might just fucking YouTube it because I refuse to support such an asshole company no. but you know just again we can't thank Hideo Kojima enough for being just a genuinely good dude you know the world needs more Hideo Kojimas for they sure. really do um, and then actually Jeff if I may I literally thought of an article about halfway through the show that uh, I forgot to have you add to the notes so we got a little bit of time I want to add to it because I thought this was interesting but did you hear about YouTube is adding a gaming specific website now. I had heard they were making a gaming website um, that was similar to like Twitch, right? That's yes. kind of what they're gaming for. That's what they're going to try to take on is Twitch. Twitch has that market. I guess you could say it virtually has it cornered because if you're watching a video on YouTube, it's not live. It's not live streaming typically. Um, but. Twitch has that completely covered via smartphone app, via web browser, um, integration into consoles. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, I'm a sucker for competition. YouTube currently has none, so to see them seeking out competition is interesting. Um, Twitch, I haven't used Twitch much, but from what I've heard from people that do and what I've read, um, it's largely shit. Apparently, okay. Um, the the content for the most part is people not talking while playing video games. Yeah, which doesn't interest me personally. But that's not really Twitch's fault that the people who are using it right. have shitty content. But fundamentally, on Twitch's side, they developed a really really good idea, and it runs flawlessly from what I've seen. Like just on well, a technical aspect. From everything that I've read, though, there's. Oh, tons of issues uploading. Um, there's tons of issues with them fucking with your stream. Oh, really? Yeah, see, I've never gone into it that deep. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I've only experienced Twitch as like a casual watcher. Never like. Apparently, a, the uh, name comes because from the fact that the service is really twitchy. 
Like, okay. it may or may not be working. That's oh, apparently okay. where they got their name. So then competition is good for them then because they need to step up their game. Yes. Because right now they have that market essentially cornered. YouTube has their own market fucking cornered. And this isn't some Joe Blow, you know, there will be expletives gaming website coming up. How dare you, This sir. is This is fucking YouTube, you know, that has the, corner, the market cornered on pissing people off. Coming into another market that is largely pissing off. I don't off know. People. I think I think they have some competition with UPS for that, <laughs> that title. <laughs> See, then UPS should be starting up their own soon, where they don't ever fucking deliver your video to anyone. I, I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. I thought that was uh, yeah, that was yeah, interesting. that's interesting. Uh, like you were talking about uh, with like PlayStation versus Microsoft. Yeah, the people who wins when these companies go at each other's throats is us, the consumer. Yes. The more they have to work to get your dollar, the more your dollars end up being worth. Yes. Because, you know, if they can sit back like Twitch and, you know, what the fuck else? It's like it's like airplane food. <laughs> it doesn't matter if airplane food's good or not. What the fuck else are you going to do? Right. So if Twitch... When you're 30,000 feet in if, the air. If, if Twitch owns live streaming... What the fuck else are you gonna do? Yeah. Where else are you gonna go? So this is this is good news. Uh, I recently have had a lot of problems with YouTube personally, <laughs> to where I don't really know who to root for in the scenario. But yeah. it, it is good that they're duking it out because I yes. I agree competition is good because for us. it can only get better if yeah. they have to start competing with each other. But so. yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's good you added that because that is something we're talking about definitely. So okay, and especially something since we're getting more into let's plays that when we have a YouTube channel that we may be interested in pursuing as well. So uh, their app, yes, is it going to be any different from the website or is it just a portable f- uh, satellite of it? It you see in the first article that I saw was not Nerdist and. Did not mention the app. So, homepage features, um, live broadcast. It even looks very Twitch in the way they have it Yes, displayed. Um, it's funny how this article mentions in the headline they're getting an app also. It sounds to me like it's a separate app. Okay. But, but it doesn't really... See, you have the liberty of watching your favorite content on a home desktop or a mobile app on your tablet or phone, and we already do that. So, uh, have they said, like, okay, the the headline for Nerdist, I believe you're on Nerdist, that says, yes. YouTube announces new gaming-specific website. Now, what do you think this is going to be under, like, URL-wise? Have they announced that? Like, is it going to be YouTube.com slash um, gaming? Like- YouTube gaming. Okay. This so- is what they have here. Specifically tailored for gaming. So, I find that interesting because, I mean, that's a large part of YouTube videos as it is. So, it's um, it's definitely a booming business because even though you said, you know, like a lot of people have problems with Twitch, yeah. just ratings wise, it's killing it because, yeah. you know, it doesn't interest me watching people not talk while playing video games, but there's a lot of people who will just spend hours and hours and that. Like, uh, Twitch plays Dark Souls has been a big thing. Oh, recently. God, yes. Uh, if you haven't heard what they did with that, it was being, you know how hard Dark Souls is. Yes, they were operating it with commands via the chat. Yeah, it, would, it took them like three weeks to beat the first boss. Yeah, my understanding is there's like there's no pause feature in the game, but they had modded the game where it would like kind of pause and wait for the next command. Yeah, what, what they the did chat. was Dark Souls is such a pain in the ass. They don't let you pause. Period. <laughs> and what they like even to change your settings. Game doesn't pause. <laughs> just says fuck you. You know, you might die at any moment. But what they what they did was they modded it to be turn based. So they after like two weeks were able to beat the first boss with the game. <laughs> but yeah, uh, definitely Twitch needs more competition. So does YouTube. Yes, YouTube's also uh, with the the Google buyout been getting a little up their own ass. Yeah, from, from my perspective. So yeah, they need more competition for sure. But yeah, I think that's a. Uh, Looks like it's going to be a wrap to this episode. Or anything else you'd like to add to that topic? No, no, I think I did my part. <laughs> a lot of ranting about UPS and Konami, and yeah, that's you Konami's know. been an ongoing theme for us. Yeah, yeah, a lot more, a lot of expletives in this <laughs> fittingly titled. <laughs> there will be expletives episode, and uh, was the next one twenty five. I believe so. A little. 
Going to bring back some guest stars. <laughs> Your dog. <laughs> <laughs> As a shepherd. Yeah. Uh, jingling in the background. We hope to, very soon, we've said this like four times, get our um, NPC, Nerdy Pathetic Casual. That's the name the of our, yeah. We did one Let's Play. We we're looking to do some more. We had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, it for not being very topical, it did de- fairly decently in hits, I thought. For us. I mean, for yeah. the fact that we have like three subscribers. It did really well. I thought it did us. really well. So yeah, we're going to be looking to do more of that. We also talked about we're going to try to do a Doctor Who special in some capacity. We don't know what, but mm-hmm. we, we both love Doctor Who. So yeah. any excuse to talk about that. Uh, if you'd like to follow us more, you can find us on Twitter at TWBE Podcast or on Facebook.com forward slash TWBE Podcast. Check us out on YouTube. Everything we do, we release to YouTube. Where you can uh, find us, just search There Will Be Expletives, find the thing that has hardly any hits. (laughs) That is us. And with that being said, I am Jeff. And I'm Ron. We will catch you next time. Well, I'm a mushroom cloud-laying motherfucker, motherfucker.